Oh, it's so good to be here. Hello, everyone. Blessings and love to you all. And um, the combination of one of your favourite hymns and witnessing the gathering of dear friends in this fellowship of the Holy Spirit of love is just the most amazing feeling. It's so filled with grace. And I hope where you are, wherever you're, uh, listening and taking part in our service, uh, in our gathering, that you're too feeling that warmth of heart that comes when two or three are gathered together in the name of Jesus. There is that spirit in the midst of us, the spirit of love. And today, of course, it's Father's Day and we are going to be thinking about searching and knowing it's an evocative day on lots of levels, isn't it? Um, but before we begin, uh, let's just hold our hearts as we pray into the current situation in the global pandemic, the coronavirus pandemic, and we pray into our own situations of that of our communities, our families, our nation and the world. And we remember all those who we remember every week, every day. Those whose lives have been lost. Those who are poorly, those who are frontline workers. The NHS, the leaders, the teachers. The people that keep the facilities on the show, on the road who mourn. A pause and then our prayer. God of compassion, be close to those who are ill, afraid or in isolation. In their loneliness be their consolation. So I think we had a bit of a crash there. Um, it's not a memory problem. I'm not quite sure what it was, but we're going to carry on. So bear with me, have a pause, just hold it in. This is on the ground. It's as un incarnational as it gets. Bless you.
of the prodigal and his brother. Then Jesus said, There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and travelled to a distant country, and there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout the country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare, and here I am dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet, and get the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, your brother has come and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, Listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed your command, yet you have never given me even a young goat so I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, who had devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice, because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. <laughs> oh dear, thank you so much, Carol. You read that beautifully. Uh, and if ever there was um, a relevant uh, reading that is this reading today. I just want to say Paul um, and Roger, I hope we've got everyone back that we lost, that they don't think that we, we ha can't get our, our service back on track. So if you know who they are, you could contact them, text or some, most of them are locals. But I hope we've managed to keep our flock together. So reflection one, this first reflection, I will arise and go to my father Regardless of the circumstances, we come to this Father's Day with happy or sad experiences of our earthly fathers. Happy or sad experiences of being a father, or whether we are happy or sad about those who have been fatherly to us, or who've been like a father to us, or those fathers and indeed children that we see no longer. Whatever your circumstances, we're here together and the goodness in being in fellowship is that in fellowship we are bonded together, as we said, with a united a Holy Spirit that weaves God's unconditional love within us and through us and allows the sad and joyful experiences to mingle together for the sad and joyous to support each other in celebration and in compassion. That is the beauty of being church, the community of the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. In today's reading, we listen to the parable of the prodigal son, and it gives us an opportunity to think about God, our heavenly father of all, 
and the themes that it evokes. Unconditional love that demands from our hearts total forgiveness, total mercy and total compassion for someone's brokenness. A love that can then offer total joy and total hope. And they are all amazingly powerful qualities of what it means to live out God's fatherly love on earth, on earth as it is in heaven. And of course, that is something that's totally impossible to do, isn't it? But we can try and we can try our best. We can give it our best shot. At the beginning of the book of Common Prayer evening service, the preface in, is, are those moving words said by the prodigal son who was broken by the lure of the world and simply completely lost in the end. I will arise and go to my father and say, Father, I have sinned before heaven and before you and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. This young man isn't even expecting anything from his father except the opportunity to earn his keep so that he can reclaim some dignity from his brokenness. When he has found his way finally and his eyes have been open, he wants to earn his keep so he can have the opportunity to live out the lessons that he's learnt as he, his spiritual blindness and ignorance falls away and he can see clearly then. And he can also make amends every day to his father after making such demands on him to have his inheritance and to leave him and go and do his own thing. I imagine many of us can identify with this scenario. Leaving what we have because we think the grass is greener on the other side, there's much more exciting things over there and going for it at all costs at anyone's expense. But actually, in the end, finding that what we had was with us all along because it's in our hearts and it's love and love and fellowship and, and family. Just being home safe with his father would be enough for this young man. And sure enough, the prodigal's loving father does wait patiently, lovingly and in silent hope. And when it is time to welcome him back, he welcomes him with open arms, no questions, just the most amazing celebration, unconditional love in action. And with all that's been going on in the world today, reflecting on our history and the injustices that have taken part, and actually on my own personal circumstances, you might have your own too, Forgiveness has been playing on my mind and I reflect too on times when I've needed to ask someone for forgiveness and I can also recall times when I've had to um, offer forgiveness for people who have come to me. Can you remember a time when you've needed forgiveness for peace of mind? What about if you've been asked to forgive someone? What did it feel like to forgive and be forgiven? I don't know about you, but I remember total relief at not being disconnected to, to the person that I was uh, interacting with and not being disconnected to God because at the end of the day, that is the relationship. The forgiveness comes from our Father and comes out from him through us into the hearts of other people. Our Heavenly Father forgives us our sins and asks that we go and do likewise. Is there anyone you might be holding a, a grudge to now? In your heart or on the ground? Someone you could set free and be set free yourself. It's worth pondering these things. God's Our Father love is the most authentic love and freely available any time we turn back for it. And the only kind of love that is always forever sustainable, unconditionally forgiving. A gift of God 
to be received and to be used for giving on, for passing on in his name. Let's use this Father's Day as a time to be grateful for the blessings of our lives across the board and yes, even amidst these strange times and to know that despite ourselves, God is always ready to welcome us home into his arms of forgiveness and unconditional love and to steer and guide us on our way on Father's Day or any other day. It's never too late. Amen. And now to our hymn led by St Martin's Choir. Oh, for a heart to praise my God. Our second reflection, fatherly love. Regardless of any earthly circumstances, today we are reminded in the words of Psalm 139 that above all else, we are children of a heavenly father, Abba, Father, that intimate endearment for that intimate loving presence of God, our heavenly father, who has known us in all ways from as far back as the beginning of all things, way before we even knew of our own existence. We have the words there on the, uh, on the Facebook page. If you haven't, just take a moment to look at them and the essence of this beautiful psalm. And imagine for a moment, if you will, that this loving parent wants nothing for us than to trust him, believe in him, and to receive his love today, just as we are, through Jesus, his own son, who is his go-between, so that we, his children on earth, can draw closer to our Father in heaven, and so receive more deeply his love, and his strength, and his comfort, and his hope, that we might find peace and harmony on our earthly journey, regardless of our struggles and strives and roles we are being called to play out in our families, our communities, 
in our world. God's love and desire for our fulfillment transcends all of those things. And we were his children before all of those things. And as a way into this psalm, I would like to invite you now to perhaps wherever you are, wherever you're sitting or relaxing or walking, wherever you are, you might want to pause, be still, perhaps close your eyes and imagine that God has taken these words and has written a letter that he's wanted to write to us, to you and to me, because he wants us to hear just how much we are loved and cherished, just like that prodigal son was loved and cherished. So here is God's Psalm 139 love letter to you, to me, and how he might have written with your seal upon his heart. God writes, my child, you may not know me, but I know everything about you. I know when you sit down and when you rise up, I'm familiar with all your ways. Even the very hairs on your head are numbered, for you were made in my image. In me you live and move and have your being, for you are my offspring. I knew you even before you were conceived. I chose you when I planned creation. You were not a mistake. For all your days are written in my book. I determined the exact time of your birth and where you would live. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. I knit you together in your mother's womb and brought you forth on the day you were born. I have been misrepresented by those who don't know me. I'm not distant and angry but I am the complete expression of love. And it is my desire to lavish my love on you simply because you are my child and I am your heavenly father. I offer you more than an earthly father ever could for I am the perfect father. Every good gift that you receive comes from my hand for I am your provider and I meet all your needs. My plan for your future is always filled with hope because I love you with an everlasting love. My thoughts toward you are countless as sands on the seashore and I rejoice over you with singing. I will never stop doing good to you for you are my treasured, treasured possession. I desire to establish you with all my desire and with all my heart and with all my soul and I want to show you great and marvellous things. If you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. Delight in me and I will give you the desires of your heart. For it is I who gave you those desires. I am able to do more for you than you could possibly imagine for I am your greatest encourager. I am also the father who comforts you in all your troubles. When you are broken hearted, I am close to you. As a shepherd carries a lamb, I have carried you close to my heart. One day I will wipe away every tear from your eyes and I will take away all the pain you have suffered on this earth. I am your father and I love you even as I love my son, Jesus. For in Jesus, my love for you is revealed. He is the exact representation of my being. He came to demonstrate that I am for you, not against you, and to tell you that I am not counting your sins. Jesus died so that you and I 
could come together again. His death was my ultimate expression of my love for you. I gave up everything I loved so that I might gain your love. And if you open and receive the gift of my son Jesus, then you receive me and nothing will ever separate you from my love again. Come home and I will throw the biggest party heaven has ever seen. I have always been father and always will be father, your father. My question is, will you, my child, be my child? I am waiting for you. Love from your heavenly father, almighty God. So on this Father's Day, I pray that we may all know that above all earthly trimmings and titles, our Heavenly Father is loving us beyond measure and will hold us close and love us with an everlasting love. I don't know about you, but I know what I will do in the hope of that promise. I will quite simply arise and go to my Father. Amen. And now Jonathan and Naomi will lead us as we sing, Father, I place into your hands the things I cannot do and we will then go into our prayers. And during the prayers, there will be some music for reflection and prayer.
So we come to our time of intercession prayer and the response to Lord in your mercy is hear our prayer. You lived your life with integrity. We pray that you shall strengthen and guide us when we are tempted to set out our minds on things human, not divine. Lead us along the path you travelled. Help us to be true to ourselves and to you and bring us into your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray that you shall grant an abundance of peace to your world and especially where there is conflict and aggression. Lord, in the places of the world where Christians, Muslims and other religions have lived together for many centuries, we pray for healing, peace and restoration. We ask that you bless those of the world and in authority who are actively working for that peace and reconciliation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Today being Father's Day, we pray that fathers, who are a mainstay of the family life, are loved and appreciated by their children, and where children and fathers are apart, for whatever reason, are brought together in your name. Lord, we pray for those who are suffering in any way with the pandemic, for those who are in hospital or recovering, the medical profession, NHS staff, care home and care, staff and carers, that your healing hand be upon them. We pray for those whose names are in our prayer book, and those we know who are suffering in any way, that you are with them all. We pray for Paul, that his treatment is successful. We remember those who have left this world, recently or far back, and are in your heavenly place. We pray that you shall continue to comfort and be with those that mourn and are struggling to cope with their loss. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for Jacqueline, Sandy and our bishops that they shall always receive your blessing and protection. We pray for this community of faith in Recklesham that attentive to your word, we may always worship in faith, spirit and truth. Lord, following the pandemic, we pray that your church here in Recklesham shall grow with new people joining us and wanting to know you. Lord Jesus, living word of God, you speak words of love and truth, encouragement and blessing. Help us to follow your example, being careful when we speak that our words honour you and do no harm to those who are our brothers and sisters in fellowship with you. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you so much for your patience and being gracious. Uh, in one of the hazards of live streaming, there's enough storage. I think we're not, we're okay this end. It was a bad signal, I think, and uh, and we did it. So thank you for being patient in that. And um, there is a notice sheet on the website. Uh, it's got lots of things in it. It's worth reading. Alpha is coming to Recklesham on the 14th of July. And what I would love, even if you're not attending, would you please hold it in your prayers? It would be lovely to have a really great gathering that we can explore and grow together and to ignite that flame of passion and love for the Lord uh, through the Holy Spirit and um, so that your prayers would be great and your presence would be even better as well. Just a point to say as well that the sermons that you hear Sunday by Sunday uh, can be accessed on a phone line, a local phone line 01252 978 369 and um, it's handy if you haven't had time to check into the service uh, but you want to reflect on the readings you can just dial it up and there's the sermon you can listen to it again <laughs> if you want <laughs> don't say anything <laughs> but uh, anyway there we are and afterwards as usual it would be lovely if you can join us to zoom in for coffee I think the number the 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 the, the code is on the on the Facebook page it would be lovely, uh, it's definitely lovely for me to see all the faces that can make that. So we go into our final hymn, led by Jonathan and Naomi. Lord, for the years, your love has kept and guided.
Thank you, Jonathan and Naomi. Lovely. And we come to our blessing as we go in the peace to serve the Lord and continue with our, our day. So Father's Day blessings uh, to everyone that we all remember, that we all have a role to play in our communities and in our families. But at the end of the day, we are all children of a loving father who watches over us and leads us on. Lord God, you are the perfect father to us all. Bless all fathers and fatherly figures in the world today and give those who have fathered us in the spirit. Give them love to share with their children. Give them wisdom to teach their children. Give them courage when the job seems hard. Give them patience when things don't go to plan. Give them strength to carry their children when they are tired or frightened. To give them love to share with their children and let love be enough. May we know that God, our Heavenly Father, is watching over us, that Jesus, our brother, abides with us, and the Holy Spirit lives within us forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. And please do spend some time just to listen to this beautiful piece of music and to allow the words and our prayers and our intentions to embed into our hearts. God bless you, dear friends, and I'll see you soon.